Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing yet another Blazor WebAssembly tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to make components inside of Razor and C Sharp obviously, and using them inside of our web application. For this tutorial, you don't need to watch the previous tutorials if you have a basic understanding as to how Blazor works, because this is a bit of a more advanced topic. But let me show you guys something that we're looking at. So see how this app has something underlined here? When you hover over it, you get a tooltip. Now naturally, Blazor doesn't have a tooltip option, so instead what we're going to be doing is developing our own component for our tooltip and implementing it into our web app. So let's start. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do in order to make our components is go into our shared folder. So inside of our shared folder, we're going to go ahead and make two files. The first file that we're going to make is called tooltip.razor. Tooltip dot razor. Okay, and consider this to be sort of like the HTML or the bare bones for our uh, tooltip component. The next thing we're going to have is another tooltip dot razor dot CSS. So make sure that the tooltip is spelled in the same casing. So there's a capital T. Okay, and have a dot CSS. So these two file names are as a result directly related with each other. Okay, now let's go into our tooltip dot razor. The first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and create a div tag. All right, uh, div tag. Okay, and then just go class and set that equal to the tooltip wrapper. All right, and what the tooltip wrapper is going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some CSS over here. But before doing that, we're going to go ahead and build this out, like build out our HT our razor. Uh, component and then we're going to add in some styling with CSS. So instead of here, the first thing we're going to want to do is have a span tag. Our span tag is, is where our tooltip text is going to be. So currently our text is going to be specified by the developer or the user. So as a result, we're going to go ahead and create that as a public variable. So I'm going to write at text over here, okay? But now at text isn't defined. So I'm going to go down here and go at code. Okay, and inside of code, I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter, and that parameter is just going to simply be a public string, public string that is a text. Uh, what do I do now? Oh yeah, and then we need to also have a get and set value. No, a getter and a set value. No, get and set. All right. Now that we have that, we're now that we have that, we now are able to call upon our tooltip and have a text value that's going to be displayed inside of our span. However, another thing we also need to do is be able to render all the other content beside it. All right, so this is, includes like the text that when you hover over it, then more text is appearing. So I'm going to go ahead and create a child content, okay? And the child content is just going to be all the other text that's there, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and make another parameter for that, parameter. And it's just going to be a public render fragment, render fragment, child content, child content, okay, which is going to be a get and set. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, wait. Oh, I'm using, uh, what's it called? regular brackets. You need to use square braces. Okay, uh, now that we've just removed the square braces, all right. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and move on to our styling. All right, so inside of our styling, we're going to have three main concepts. First thing that's going to happen is the span tag. What's going to be specified inside of our span? Okay, we're also going to then go ahead and have a, a design for our, our tooltip wrapper, and we're also going to have one for after the span tag has been hovered over. All right, uh, and also just one just to combine the two together. All right, so let's let's first of all focus on the span tag. So inside of our span tag, we're gonna want a couple of different things. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure the visibility is hidden, right? Because initially we don't want it to be seen. The next thing we're gonna have is our position, and our position is just gonna be absolute to whatever scenario, wherever the text is located. So it's just absolute. No, absolute, okay? Because we have a flex bot and it's moving in and out, so it's gonna be dependent on the screen size. 
The next thing we're going to have is our width, right? So our width, we're just going to make it a pretty small tooltip. You guys can make it larger if you want. I'm going to choose about, I don't know, 150 pixels. All right. The next thing we're going to do is just figure out the bottom location. So our bottom location is just going to be about uh, 100%. 100%. Okay. And then we're going to have our left area, which is just going to be 50 uh, I'm going to go ahead and just speed this up and then I'm just going to explain it to you afterwards. All right, so I just quickly sped up that coding process because I felt like I was just explaining things a bit slowly. So continuing on, we just have a, a left, we just have our basic locations like our bottom and our left. Okay, and we're using percentages because this is in relation with the screen. Uh, we also have a background color, so that's just going to be the color behind the tooltip. And as you notice over here, we also have a color, right? So that's going to be any of the text inside of our span tag, also known as the tooltip.text value. All right. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and have our, our text align. And automatically, it's going to be at the center, similar to how it is right now with Visual Studio Code. We also have some padding. This just helps make the text a lot more neat and aligned. OK. And yeah, that, that's practically it. The next thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is add a tooltip wrapper. Okay, we're going to want to go ahead and style that. So in order to style our tooltip wrapper, because it's a div component, also known as just like our, our own custom component, we can't really, uh, we're just going to have some very basic dimensions for it. Uh, let's see our here. Uh, yeah, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just add its position to be as relative. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and just copy and paste this as well and then explain it afterwards. All right, so for the tooltip wrapper, we also have a rel relative position, okay? And then we also have a cursor for help, right? So when there's a cursor for help, that basically means that the, whenever the cursor hovers over it, that means that something is needed. That means that we're sort of calling upon this component. We also have our border at the bottom, which is just going to be sort of like its background, okay? And then we also have our display, which is going to be in line. So it's just going to be in line with that element, right? So the H1 tag or an H5 tag or like a button tag, depending on what whatever it is that you're implementing it with. The tooltip that we're creating does work with all HTML tags. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is also add one more thing to our span. And we're going to just go ahead and just do that over here. Span after, all right? And inside of span after, we're actually going to go ahead and add in certain stuff or certain animations that are going to happen after the span tag has been interacted with. In order to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and put this here. The content that's being shown is a null or an empty string. The position remains as is, and so does the top and you know the top and left dimensions. We need these two to be the same, otherwise it's going to be displaying differently. Okay. Uh, the same thing goes with like the margin. Okay. Our border colors. Rough, so the border color just means the, uh, so we have a bit of a border color at the bottom. And the reason for that is just so that it's sort of like an underline and it helps show the user if there's a tooltip to help them with their task altogether. Okay. And then at the bottom over here, we're just going to want to go ahead and just call upon the tooltip wrapper whenever it touches the span. So you're just going to go dot tooltip wrapper, hover, span. And we're just going to go visibility and just set that equal to visible. All right, so we've successfully built our tooltip. Now let's learn how to implement our component that we just created. All right, so in order to implement our component, what you're going to want to do is just find some text like this welcome to your new app. Okay, and you're just going to want to add a tooltip tag over here. So you can go tooltip. Okay. And then it would just automatically generate uh, another slash tooltip. If it doesn't, you can just write it manually. Now over here, as you might have noticed, this isn't a normal HTML tag. And you can see that because this is highlighted in orange, right? Because I'm using a VS Code extension that helps recognize that. But initially, but what's happening here is that it's going into our shared properties, okay? And it's finding this component made out over here, okay? And it's going ahead and using that. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Now, here's a fun little riddle for you guys. Do you guys think you'll see some text? Pause this video if you guys want to think about it for a moment. Now, once this is done loading, I'm just gonna go ahead and just boot this up. Uh, I know, wait, where's the link? 
There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to open this up. So, as you can see over here, there's a huge underline over here, and there's no text being seen. That's because we haven't added any yet. Now, the reason why it's underlined is because it takes the tooltip property, it takes in all the text and underlines it automatically. We went over this a bit earlier when we were discussing the CSS. Now, if I go ahead and just add some text over here, in order to do that, I'm just going to add text and then make a string with my text. So, tooltip implementation. Okay. Now, if I do that, what it's going to do is take our component, find a component of text, which does exist, and go ahead and span that out. Now, when I go ahead and refresh the page, okay, watch what happens. You can see the tooltip implementation. So, as you can see, we've successfully created our very own component in Blazor. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.